Welcome back to the Loss Prevention News Network. It's Amber Bradley here with Joe LaRocca and a special guest from 7-Eleven, Jim Passarella, Director of Asset Protection. What's up? How are you? Good. How's it going today? It's going great. How are you guys doing? Well, I know that this is Joe LaRocca. You guys, you know, just meeting for today. Not really. Like, like two months ago, yeah. we met for the first time. Mm -hmm. More like 20 years. Like 20 years, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Oh, back when you both were 10. When How we were 10. special. I wish. They we grew played, up their we played Hi Ho Cheerios mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Uh, let's not go there. She's too young to even remember that. Oh, oh. I, I don't. I don't. Too young, indeed. So you have uh, some questions because, because now. With the D&D, &D, you know how it is, Jim. You step into the hot seat. So any, anything can happen. We've got our hashtag screen running over here. we got thousands of people in the audience. So is we'll it, hit them up for the question. Is it too late to get out of here? Or nope, you know? nope. Huh. Now you're on camera. We, we nice. might let you phone a friend, but well, maybe not. <laughs> no lifelines. Hey. Yeah, no lifelines. No lifelines for you. Well, well it's, let's start with, the, let's start with the, the easiest hard one you're going to get all day. Right? Easy hard, okay. Easy <laughs> hard. If you were to rewind the clock... So, 20 years, and you were to look, give advice to someone, uh, a young, a little Jimmy, right? And you were to um, give advice to that person, and, and, and maybe a tag on to that question. The attributes you look for now in somebody that you're hiring, what, what, what's, what, what are some of those characteristics you're, you're looking for? So, to wind back 20 years, um, I would probably tell someone, don't jump right into LP or the asset protection world. Start in the operations side. You know, the, you play so much catch up when you start in the asset protection side, kind of going backwards to understand the business. So if it were me, I had to start over, I would absolutely start on the operations side. That's a new that's, tip. That's a new yeah. tip, great advice. Nice. Great advice. Okay, so let's follow up on it. What experience would you draw or hope to draw from the operations side leading towards a more successful LP future? So for me, and I kind of piggybacks with what you asked with attributes, I would look for someone who has a strong business acumen. Right now, you talk to folks and they understand the LP world very well. Right. But when you talk about the business side, what's really impacting business from a larger perspective, there's the miss there. So I would absolutely you know, look for stronger business acumen. And I would guess that's a, a skill that, not just uh, something that you're looking for in LP, but you're, your leadership, your C-level leadership expects the LP team to have that versatility to talk to the business operators as well as manage the core responsibilities of loss prevention. Yes, absolutely. If you have to be able to speak the language, you have to be able to sit down with the C-level folks, uh, senior management, and talk to them at their level. They don't want to hear about the shoplifting. They don't want to hear about right. an internal theft. They want to hear about what's impacting the business at large. Right. So thinking about if they had operations in the background too, it, that's going to move the profession even more, to, less toward sales prevention, right? I mean, how many times has LP people heard that? We don't want you to be sales prevention, right? So if they're already starting in operations, they kind of know that walking in the door. Absolutely true. I mean, it, that's, listen, we're all here to make money. I right. mean, that's the name of the game. Right. So the more you understand the business and the impact that it has, the greater, greater opportunity and advantage you have. So absolutely. This is value packed right here. Yeah, that's great. Great advice. So, Jim, let me since uh, since we've known each other a while and and we share an affinity for technology. We do. Um, where are your sites set? What types of technology are you looking at today? I mean, we hear lots of like cool things that are proprietary, and I don't I don't mean for you to go proprietary, but um, in a broad sense, what are you looking at, and what? or some other retailers should be focused on? So I, I think everyone understands the technology piece. You look at exception-based reporting systems. You're looking at video systems. I think right, the technology now is moving towards combining them. You know, not just standalone systems, but how do the systems integrate? How do they work with each other? You know, what value-added data can you get from them? So I think that's where the industry's moving. That's the way I'm looking anyway. Well, I bet that's especially important for 7-Eleven because you guys have both corporate stores and franchisee stores. And so how do you suggest technology that would help integrate all of those into to a seamless platform. Yeah, that's the challenge. I think everybody's chasing that right now. You know, and the other thing with this, it helps the vendors work together. Like right. there's more collaboration than it was in the past. Where everyone just had a standalone, I have a better system than you. My video system is better, it works faster, it's crisper, it's cleaner, my data is cleaner, I can gather more and get it to you more quickly. That's all great, it's wonderful. But if you can't combine the two, you know, you're, you're, you're falling behind. Now it's about how can you share that data with the three other partners I need to look at it through their 
their Absolutely. systems and, yeah. and be- help them yeah. serve us better. And also the data is not just for asset protection anymore. It helps the entire enterprise. And I think if you're not looking in that direction, you're missing the big picture. Well, and that helps it helps you sell it to the C-level folks too. I mean, who needs help getting more budget, right? You talk about, oh, where's the ROI? Have you heard that a couple times? Never. Never, <laughs> never. Take this guy's perspective so you never hear that. Mm-hmm. So since you stepped into the hot seat, we can't talk all business because then, you know, it wouldn't be the hot seat. So we talked about the whole rewinding to what would you tell little Jimmy, but the other question is... Has anybody maybe, ever called you Jimmy before? No, but no. thanks. And no. that's out there. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> he said somebody did yeah. once. Somebody did once. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you stepping into the hot seat. And speaking of getting back to more retail retailer value, we're going to send it back to Gus Downing. Take it away, Gus. Mm-hmm.